My name is Livia Newbert, for those of you who uh, don't know me. And um, with, along with my colleague, Chad Argat Singer, we've envisioned this project uh, called Student Voices. And uh, today we have here, I'm just gonna briefly tell you what this project is about. The idea is to educate people about diversity, enlighten everyone. We want to um, try to reduce, prevent, and eradicate neg negative discourses here um, on BCC campus. And in order to do that, we believe it's strongly important to facilitate more dialogue and to put our students in the center of these discussions. So we want to increase awareness, appreciation of diversity and social difference, while highlighting and empowering BCC students' voices. So today we've invited three students, three BCC students to speak to you about their trajectories, their successes and challenges um, in life, and also um, here at Bristol Community as a college student. So we're gonna hear about their stories and we're gonna open up for questions at the end if anyone has a question that, that you would like to ask them. Okay, so I'm gonna start. Thank you, Livia. For those of you in the crowd that probably don't know me, since I know that there is a fair few, my name is Jonathan Lake. Technically, I actually, well, if anything, I was actually a student here at BCC, graduate of the class of 2014. However, I actually am still here at Bristol Community College as a, as a student mentor. Back when I started here in 2009, I, I guess you could say I it was like I was sailing in uncharted waters, not knowing exactly what, what my path was going to be, which way I wanted to go. But one thing I can tell you, when you happen to be someone on the autism spectrum, like myself, some things don't exactly come naturally. Like take for example, if you happen to be someone that happens to enjoy everything being disorganized, try putting that together with at least 10 times worth of that chaos and the only thing that you, you would end up with is, well, me on a bad day during my first couple semesters. To be honest, I would, heck, if it wasn't for a lot of the help and support I actually got from the Office of Disability Services, Student Life, and several other organizations here, I don't think I would have gotten my associate's degree in marine sciences and technology. I guess, well, the one thing that actually did inspire me, actually not just one, but two things that happened to inspire me when I was a student here that, that actually led to my success. One of them was actually the support system I actually had set up. Not just with my fellow students, but also with several members of the faculty as well. Like take for example, the Office of Disability Services. They, they were actually there for me when I needed help the most. Secondly, and the second part is actually the very thing that inspired me to keep moving forward even when everything seemed to be lost. The very love of my life, who, who also is a graduate of, from BCC, graduated back in 2016. She was the one that literally drove me to become something even better drove me to literally push past a lot of the barriers I had kept up during my first years as a student. <laughs> Believe it or not, I actually used to pretty much stick in the shadows during my free time on the campus. It was only after my third year as a student here that I finally said to myself, Jonathan, you really need to learn to broaden your horizons a bit and, and actually try to interact with some, with some of the organizations around here 
because they could be of a great help to you in the future. As luck would have it, they were. It was actually thanks to professors as well, such as my, such as my, my advisor for the longest time, Robert Rack, and several, and several other teachers like Mike Geary, Madeline Costa, Bob Karen, and of, and of course, the two professors I actually had for, for, my, for my majority math classes. The late, doc, the late Walter Sawyer and, and Professor Jerry Magnin. If, if, if it wasn't for those guys, I guess you could say that, well, not just them, but also for, it wasn't for Gabriel Pereira and Maureen, and, and Maureen Sala, my more interesting classes would have been, well, less interesting. When, I guess you could say, I'm, instead of being more of a, uh, more of an, or, of an oral or even a visual learner, I prefer more of a hands-on approach. These teachers actually managed to take actually managed to take that to a whole new level when, when they learned a lot about me after only the first few weeks of classes. It was thanks to their inspiration that I was actually able to not only help implement the ideas for a lot of the green technology we currently have here at BCC, such as the solar canopies, as well as the energy efficient lighting that we happen to have here. And yes, I am taking, actually I'm taking partial credit for that. But I guess it was also due to the fact that it was a bit of a, this place happens to have a bit of a family setting, sort of like a second home. So no, so no matter where you go, you always have a place to come back to. And that's actually the reason why I felt after I graduated, I would come back to help the next generation of students, whether they were on the spectrum or not, to help them avoid a lot of the pitfalls that I did. Try to help them avoid a lot of the, a lot of both the emotional and mental challenges that I had to endure as a student. And try to give them some helpful tips to avoid a lot of the problems, especially when it comes to those major exams. Well, since I don't want to take up any more time, all I can say is thank you very much for having me. And, and for those that are graduating or, or starting, best of luck to all your future endeavors. Thank, thank you, you, Jonathan. Now I'll pass it on to our next speaker. Jonathan, before you do that, I have one more question for you, oh, if you don't so, mind. Go ahead. If BCC could change one thing to make your studies or others easier, what would that thing be? Hmm. One, thing that could, one thing that could change that could help, that could actually help. Hmm. You know, it's, ac it's actually a very good question, and I actually have, I think I have an answer for that. The, the one thing that they actually had during, well, since I'm actually a uh, third, gener I'm actually a second generation student here at BCC, my own, both my parents actually managed to graduate here as well. My mother, and my mother was actually one of the uh, was actually one of the founding heads of the tutoring center. Perhaps the one thing that could, have, that could actually help is by actually ha I mean, it's actually by having a bit of a small group orient like small groups of students or people that have actually taken the class in the past. To actually get together for, I guess you could call it a uh, a group tutoring session. This way, they actually happen to have people from both past and the present that can actually help our future succeed in these classes. Because those who actually manage to forget the past are unfortunately doomed to repeat it. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Come on, I know there's someone out here that actually wants to ask a question. If you don't have a question right now, you can always come back and ask that at the end, okay? Uh, okay, passing it on to 
Speaker number two. Viviane Goezi. Hello, everyone. My name is Viviane Goez. Um, it's my third academic semester at BCC. I started as a ESL student last year. And at first, I chose, I chose um, BCC for convenience. It's close to my home, and I thought, if there is an emergency, my son or my husband will need me, I'll get there fast. Please. But it changed um, with the time, because BCC started to play an important role in my life. And today, it doesn't matter if I have to drive one hour, 20 minutes in a day, to go to Aldeboro, for example, to take a class, which I will be doing during summer. Um, as I said, BCC is playing an important role in my life right now, or since last year, but especially this year. They have given me the opportunity to experience, to experience a lot of things that other than not here, I would not have. Um, I could mention some experience, but I will mention at least one that happened two weeks ago. It started on, on fall 2017, when I was taking a class of English 102. And I had the opportunity to make a paper, to do a paper comparing some works. And I love the poem that I read, that I read. I read the poem and I love that. And um, I sent an email for the author, and I talked to my professor to see if there was any possibility to bring the poet to BCC. He talked to the class department, and to make a long, uh, short, uh, long story short, two weeks ago, we, have, we had the, him right here, um, and it was an, an amazing experience I had, because I, I could, um, I noticed that BCC professors, quest department, and so many people right here, um, or gave me the opportunity to be an active learner, to have a voice, and it's, it's something. But like many other students, I have challenges, I have struggles. Um, the last time I was in a, in a class setting was 24 years ago in Brazil, and technology has advanced so much. The teaching method has changed so much. So to get back to school itself, it's a challenge. And also, I'm a mother, I am a wife, and um, it's, kind to tr it's kind to be a juggler trying to hold everything balanced in hands. And uh, to be a mother and wife in so many roles at the same time um, affects, directly affects the way I keep standing by my education. Sometimes it's absolutely heavy. It's something on my shoulders that I think, oh my gosh, it's worthy to try a little bit more, but I'm here, I'm always trying. And um, it's important to, to keep a focus that your education is something that you transform you and you change your life and everybody else around you. So above all the struggles, certainly and clearly, um, the language barrier is something really big. It's something that sometimes holds me down, and um, it's absolutely frustrating to not be able to express myself as I want, as I wish. It's absolutely frustrating to not be able to deliver my ideas, my views, um, as deep and meaningful as they are in Portuguese. And most of time in class, I am allowed, I have a loud mind, but my, my silent lips, because I'm avoiding this kind of stress. I avoid to embarrassment that I certainly will have. Like right here in front of you, it's something that, it, it's a, a huge thing to me. And it's an opportunity. It's the kind of situation that BCC is allowing me to be, to do, and there are people, there are tutors, there are professors, there are advisors. To be in front of you right now, talking in front of you, it's a, 
a result of an advisor support and encouragement. Other than that, I will not be here. They, they, gave, they give me the opportunity to, to try a little bit more, to put a thought on it. And it's awesome because they are looking beyond then um, they, they are looking for skills, abilities, efforts, beyond then a flood of writing and speaking, at least right now. And it's, it's kind of, it's good, because um, somehow I can feel related when I have opportunity to do something that I could do yesterday. It's hard, but I can, I can keep trying. I think um, that's the great thing that BCC has happened to me. I can see professors, tutors, uh, advisors, as I mentioned before, trying very hard to push me further. They, BCC is not just allowing me to, to go further. They are helping me, they are supporting me, they are pushing me there because they see beyond what I can see right now. Right now, most of the time, I'm just focused on my struggles and my limitations. And they look to me and say, look, you are not seeing that. You move from that to this point. I saw this. You are there, you are not barely speak something, and right now we are able to do something. So it's an experience that transforms me, and I'm kind of open myself to accept the challenge right now more than I did before. It doesn't annulate that I'm shaking, that I'm kind of having a heart attack sometimes, but it, it's something that transforms you. Like challenge should be seen under the, the perspective that there are opportunities to make you stronger, to, to develop something that you don't have yet. It yet is important to keep in mind. So I'm just waiting for a fourth semester and a fifth semester to see what's going on. But I'm not stagnant right here. I'm trying to do something. Question? Any question? Yes. Could you talk a little about what's one thing you wish faculty and staff knew about your situation or What's one thing BCC could change to make things a little bit easier? Hmm. I think that there are two things that I think um, BCC could do. I don't know if they are, they are willing to do. Um, right here I have found professors that nev have never given me classes. And they are willing to discuss an idea, a paper, um, even though they don't know me, and it's something. Because it speaks to validation, I think. Um, there are professors that experienced uh, touring, for example, and I think it's changed the, 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 the way they approach to the students. If there is something, a suggestion that I would give to BCCs, every professor should have at least one month experience in a Turing lab. They will identify why some students behave the way they behave. I think it's just transform experience for both of because um, that are situation that I discussed with a tutoring, with them or with, a, and, and I, I am very selective when it comes to tutoring. I choose a specific ones that I know that will bring me up. Because with them, I know that I can have a level, elevated level of discussion. And they will correct me at the same time. But I'm not in front of everyone. So I think they know me sometimes better than my professors that stay with me three months. So I think it's something that I suggest. I love tutoring lab. <laughs> it's something that changes views. And there you can open yourself a little bit more about the way you, you you see things, and it doesn't matter if you're like speaking wrongly. They will correct you, but it's personal. They will also re listen to you. So that's my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you very much. You. Taylor? Hello. Uh, my name is Taylor Corbett. I, uh, I'm actually the president of Club Theater on campus and the treasurer of the Hero Club. 
Um, I started at BCC in 2012, um, initially because I have three older siblings and they've all graduated from BCC. Um, and it, my parents, not only is it a more affordable option, but it's a good way to help boost your credentials when you want to go to a bigger school. So um, that was my main reason for coming to BCC. Uh, I started in 2012, took about a three year absence from the school and um, came back a class a semester. Uh, in that time frame, I came out to my family as transgendered and began my transition from uh, male into female. And um, once I had gotten over when, once I had gotten through my family and we'd kind of, everybody had made their peace with it and gotten used to the idea, um, I started being myself in every situation and that's made my life significantly easier and significantly better. Uh, so it's been an interesting journey on that front. But uh, I guess one of my most rewarding experiences when it comes to BCC is um, being able to act in the theater program um, because I am a theater major and uh, even though the program is in suspension right now until we can get a director of the department, uh, there has been a fair amount of theater available for people to experience. I've been in two shows with uh, companies that were brought in by BCC that allowed students to audition and um, this past semester uh, unfortunately, the students were not going to be able to audition for the show that they had brought in. So I decided to start Club Theater back up and just do a show on our own. And that show wrapped up this weekend and we did pretty well. We made over $1,000 on the weekend, which was nice given that it's our first performance that students have put together in about three or four years. Um, thank you. Um, and I actually, one of the reasons why that was a rewarding experience for me and also a challenging experience is uh, I was the director, producer, set designer, lighting designer, sound designer. I got most of the props and um, I uh, was acting in the show as well. So I did a lot of stuff for that. Um, but uh, it, especially the theater at BCC, even when I was here with Bren um, back in 2012, it's such an accepting community and it's such a strong community to be a part of and I'm happy that BCC still has some kind of a community and hopefully that'll continue to get stronger. Um, let's see. Uh, one of the things that helped a lot with getting that running and with me staying sane on campus was uh, the offices of student life. They have been exceedingly helpful. They told me everything I needed to do to get the club up and running and um, have helped us with getting scripts if we needed it and getting all of our bills taken care of. Um, and also the offices of advising. I go there, I tell them what kind of classes I'm looking for and they get me everything I'm looking for within like a half an hour. I've had nothing but good experiences with um, student advising. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> as far as like teachers on campus, I have had a lot of very good experiences with teachers. Um, personally being trans, having to initially tell them what my preferred name and pronouns were because I did have to get my name changed at some point. Um, Every teacher I told, they were like, oh, okay, and they made a note, and then that was all I had to deal with on that front. But um, I'd like to see the school, and I think they are working on this, uh, make it so that there's a way of letting teachers know beforehand about preferred names and pronouns, and also providing the, uh, the training for faculty and staff so that they know how to approach those situations. And um, I think that's all I have to go. Taylor, could you maybe talk about um, the three years you took off? What prompted you to come back? Uh, I think I, I just had a lot of personal stuff going on, which is why I, the main reason why I stepped away. Uh, like I said, in that time frame, um, actually towards the very end of that time frame is when I came out to my family. So that was uh, a large 
portion of that time, I was very, very depressed. Um, and also, the reason why BCC was where I decided to come back to was, um, one, I knew the campus fairly well, and um, I knew that it was a safe environment for people like me, for the most part. Um, I haven't had any bad experiences, and I've heard of very few bad experiences from other people in my position. Um, so it was an accepting place and a fairly convenient place. I already knew what it was. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Are there any questions Thank you would you. like to ask any of our panelists? Oh. Oh, yes. Thanks. I forgot your name in the middle. Yeah, what's your name? Vivian? Vivian. So um, as a student that's also um, not traditional age-wise, I was just wondering, like, as a student at BCC, how do you feel welcomed with being in classes where you're usually the oldest one in the class? Because that happens to me on a regular basis. It's a good point to discuss. Um, usually in class, um, I look around and I see, like, kids. They are... <laughs> they are in an age that they could be my kids. And I think, oh, they are first to come out of high school with something. And it, especially when it comes to um, tests, exams, I look around, I think, I'm lost right here. Because I don't like, the, especially the writing in class. I don't feel relate to anyone else because they know what they are putting in the paper. And when I do a paper or um, anything I have to write down, for example, it's kind of a ritual. I have to open a window of vocabulary, synonyms, dictionary. It's everything in front of me. And then I do a paper. It's like, it's, it's in class writing doesn't help me because as a second language student, because it's not supposed to, be, to come out a better outcome due to this. So when I look to them, I think they are like fresh mind, they take everything quickly. But I think that is a good side of our age too. You look at education with maturity. You know, we know what it means right now and ahead of time. I think we have something that they don't have yet. And some of them will never get it. So I can firmly say that even though it's a, it's a struggle to be in a class with youth, it's also um, a way to be proud of myself because I know the reasons why I didn't take my education at my time. Yeah. And I know why I got back. So I think you have kind of look at us and said, oh, we're, like, we're doing the right thing, girls. Keep moving. I agree with you, definitely. I feel the same way when you talk about making papers because, like, I'm, like, looking at it, like, and sometimes I can't remember, like, when I was in high school and what, you know, um, a fractured sentence is or whatever. And I look at the other kids and they just write it. So I'm very happy that they chose to have someone of your age represented today because I, I think it's very important. And I don't know if that happens to you, but sometimes, even though, like, I'm talking about myself. I don't feel prepared enough to be in a classroom. Um, some of them come to me because they know that I'm older and they kind of, how you do this? How you do? And I think like, really? I'm giving advising already? Yeah, they, so it's kind they of definitely funny. do that. I tend to be a note taker, so a lot of them ask me for my notes too. So it's, yeah. it's just an interesting, it's an interesting um, transaction at, or, you know. May I ask you something? Sure. Are you a mother? Yes, one of my sons right here. Hi, how are you? That's what I'm t telling you right now. One, like my, the precious thing I have in my life is my son. I am able to die and kill for him. He's amazing. And I, my experience to get back to school right now is teaching him beyond words. Every week, I hear things that sometimes make me cry. He look at me and say things that I could never imagine listen from him. Because he's seeing how much it's important by the effort I have put right there. So sometimes it's not needed words.
to tell them how much education is important. He's about to start his high school right now. And last week, he sat with me and talked a lot of things that I could have never imagined. So move on. Don't worry about your, like, to be in a classroom. It's, I know it's stressful. I know it's different. But you are playing an important role for the ones that matter most, your kids. Keep Thank moving. You. Thank you. Jonathan or Taylor, do either of you want to comment on the classroom environment and sometimes feeling like you're the only one? I have to, I actually have, do have to agree with, with, with Vivian when it does come to the classroom environments of, of our current generation. Back when I first started as a student, everything was pretty much, I guess you could say, cut and dry. We, I guess we were given the assignment and we were, asked, we were asked to do it, starting from part A to part B to part C. However, as Vivian has actually, has actually as so proudly, and I know, I, know, I know it was actually hard for you to, to, to actually say just how much our education is, is actually starting to become a little bit, a little bit, light, light, as you can see, like a rocky shore. It's all because a lot of our generation, we are the ones that, that didn't exact, haven't exactly been around to see some of the major mistakes that our world made within the last half century. It's like I said before, those doomed to remember history are destined to repeat it. Every single day I actually leave my own house I have actually seen oppression left and right of those that do not deserve it. Being someone that, well, what? Sorry, just got just got mind. Mine's just ended up getting scrambled for a second. I apologize. Anyway, <clears throat> every single time I, I, every single day I leave my house these days. The only thing, I, only thing I can actually see is oppression of some kind, all because someone's different. If this is how our future is going to be, then if you ask me, it's definitely not a future that's actually worth fighting for. What we need is an educational system that not only, not only forces us to learn, but also helps us become enlightened about events that, that have happened Events that are and events that have not yet come to pass. I mean, think about it. I've actually been, been to certain parts of the world and I've actually met people that have come from some, some of the more challenging environments in my lifetime. And seeing and hearing a lot of their experiences, I have only one thing to say. The time has come for us to not only open our eyes open our eyes, but to open our minds to other possibilities. Because if we just stay in one world, as in the world that we have always known, then the amount of knowledge that we can learn is limited. Only by learning as much as we can about not only ourselves, but about others around us whether they be transgender or whether they come from another part of the world or even if they happen to be on the autism spectrum like myself. Every single person represents a single piece of a much larger puzzle. The only way we're going to be able to learn is just by asking and by listening as well. Uh, as a student at Bristol Community College, I have always more respect towards older people. I feel like being a class in the older people, I have like a, like a, I'm learning like a, so much things I have never learned as a teenager. So as a, like older people in the classroom, we have a more opportunity to ask them. And as a group, I feel like 
I found my mother and like a brother, big brother, big sister, and like a father. So as a working with a, like a different like a ages in the classroom, you can achieve like a more goals and you can turn your project like a super quickly. And you're gonna have like a more connection between those people and they're gonna understand you more better than like better than as a, like a teenager, and they're gonna respect you more. As a student here, I realize having a older people in the classroom, I have learned like so much, and I have always respect towards them, and I always respect them. I feel like I found like a big brother, big sister, mother and father, so I love them, and I'm learning so much from them, so. Any other questions or comments? I actually do happen to have one for our third speaker, Taylor. I actually, during your speech, I actually heard you mention the, the, the former head of, of the theater department, Rylan Brenner. I actually had the privilege of sitting in on several of the productions that have been done by but by the theater team here at BCC, several of them were, were actually done as a performance during, during the time that my girlfriend, Jordan David, was actually here as a student and also as one of the actors. After hearing that you managed to restart club theater even after, even, even after Bren's retirement from the college, nothing has actually made me prouder than to see that that the new generation is actually starting to follow in his footsteps at last. So I, I actually offer you my heartiest congratulations and best of luck to you in your future endeavors. Taylor, we actually have one theater question for you. Jonathan for president. <laughs> so um, what are your plans for the theater club and like how to progress the arts at this school? Well, one thing I'd like to do is um, I've already started talking to the scheduling people about figuring out a show for next year for the club. Um, as far as I'm aware, we are supposed to have a full theater program again next year. And um, depending on who the director of that is uh, will depend on how I schedule my shows because they will get first dibs on all the shows as they should. and we will figure something out for students to run during that time. Um, one thing I've been thinking about a lot lately is uh, I, I think there's a good way for students, faculty, and staff to try to streamline the communication between each other. Um, and I, I mean that even going as high up as administration levels. It's just most of the people I have dealt with have been very good about getting back to me, but there have been times where things haven't gotten communicated when they necessarily should have been. Um, and uh, I, I feel like that combined with um, a general feeling of the school investing back into students will be helpful. Um, one thing in regards to the club is uh, I remember when I was here in 2012, clubs had a lot more funding than they do now. and. Um, it kept, it made it so that clubs could do more and made students want to be on campus more. And um, I feel like if the school invests just a little more into putting on activities that students want to be a part of on campus when there's no classes going on, it'll increase their want to be at the school and it'll increase retention at the school. And honestly, the more students are, that are here, the better an education that we all get. So. Um, as far as like my plans for stuff next year, uh, definitely getting a show for club theater to run so that students can have something that they're running on their own and um, figuring out a partnership with the new theater program head would be my first two like steps I wanna take, but yeah. Thank you very much. Can we get one more round of applause for our panelists? 
So uh, on behalf of Livy and I, thank you very much for coming. We hope that you learned something new and different about our students or maybe uh, reaffirm some things that you would have been thinking about. We do have two more of these planned with different student speakers. So February 2nd and February, February, May 2nd and May 22nd. So please tell your friends and colleagues, we have lots of pizza, so help yourself. And if you have not signed in on our clipboard, please do so. We're gonna send you a very brief five question survey to gather your feedback, um, and we very much appreciate it. Have a great afternoon, thank you. Hang on a second, there's actually one last thing before we officially close out for the session. With all the talk of me being on the autism spectrum, I would actually like to inform all of you of of a public opening panel, of a, of a public panel discussion that's actually going to be happening here at Bristol Community College next Wednesday in H209, I believe. It's going to be from 12 to 2. It's hosted by, my, by myself and by the, by the Independent Autism Media Group, which, which is so graciously sponsored by Bristol Community College's Office of Disability Services. If you really wish to have more information about those on the spectrum and about how you can actually help them when it comes to self-advocacy, I personally suggest that you attend the panel as well. Again, it's on, again, the panel is going to be next Wednesday, April 25th at 12 p.m. in H209. Thank you.